Yesterday during our garden tour we took a look at a bell pepper plant that had some black spotting on the leaves. Um, it was pretty widespread through the plant um, and it was covered kind of beneath a bunch of cucumber leaves and I assumed it was probably staying pretty wet back there and thought it was probably some sort of um, fungal disease that I could treat. I took some time and just looked up online what it could possibly be and what I found was that it really fits the description of um, a bacterial leaf spot that comes um, in rainy seasons specifically or, or more commonly and this has been an extremely <laughs> rainy season here in Minnesota and I think kind of across across the United States and so I'm not surprised to see something like that but I was I was worried and disappointed because the articles that I found were were very um, doom and gloom and kind of bleak prognosis for these plants in that you know there's no cure for it it spreads easily your nearby plants are at risk and you know I just kind of this wave of fear came over me like oh I'm gonna lose my whole garden but really I mean I've never had anything that bad happen before and so I'm choosing not to panic um, one of the solutions that the articles gave was to use a copper-based fungicide um, although it's a bacterial uh, leaf infection um, and that was the recommendation and while it's not going to cure the damage that has already happened it's it's useful in preventing the spread of the disease not only to the affected plant but also to the plants around it um, and considering the rainy season we've had this year even today uh, we had another downpour so every it's almost like every single day this year has been rained on the garden and so um, I picked up um, some copper fungicide and I just grabbed this at my local Home Depot store I think it was maybe ten dollars it is marked for organic gardening, um, not intentionally, but it, you know the recommendation was to use copper, so that's what I got. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down to the garden and I'm just going to take a look at that plant, um, its proximity to the other plants, and try to decide, you know, is it worth trying to save this plant, even though if I try to save it, I may be risking the plants around it. Um, I may need to sacrifice that plant. Um, you know, if the entire garden was infected with it, I think, you know, the solution would be, well, to try to save it all, but it could just be that I need to take this one plant out and hope that I get a good enough yield on all my other, other plants to, um, it, you know, to make it okay to take out that one plant. So let's take a little walk down to the garden. We'll take a look again at, um, the pepper plant and we'll just inspect the plants that are around it and um, we'll decide from there how we're going to treat. We did have a lot of rain today and I think um, there's some more rain probably coming so I'll have to take a look at the forecast too and just see if I want to treat the garden today um, even though there might be rain coming. Um, this particular treatment needs to be sprayed on the tops and bottoms of the leaves plus the stems and everything and I have a lot of plants down there so it's going to take me a significant amount of time to do this treatment so if it's going to downpour an hour later obviously um, I'll probably wait um, but I do think it's urgent enough that I should try to get this on on the plants as soon as I can because I just can't um, risk anymore. I also think you know we looked at those plants that I had in that new impromptu um, um, earth bed the tomato plants that are just not doing well I think I need to pull those out um, if they have the same kind of bacterial infection I could lose all of the plants and so I'm gonna take some time and just pull all of those out um, and get rid of them they can't go in the compost because even through composting um, even over the course of a year that bacterial that bacteria can stay in there and so um, when I do prune the plants if that's what I choose to do or if I take them out those have to go in the garbage rather than in the compost the articles that I read said that, you know, the infections can come from a number of places. Um, you know, I've already said it, you know, it can spread from plant to plant and it kind of 
incubates in this warm and moist weather but this particular bacteria can also manifest in the seed so it could be that the seeds that I had um, started with were infected um, and so you know rec one recommendation is just that you make sure that when you buy your seeds that you're buying seeds that have already been guaranteed to um, have that disease resistance or have been treated already for that bacterial infection and that's not something that I've looked for before so I'll definitely take that into consideration when I buy my seeds for next year. Um, I tend to doubt that it was the seeds because it wasn't all of my plants that got it. It was really just this one plant that was buried among the cucumbers in there and wasn't getting a lot of airflow. So I don't think it was a seed but I'm definitely going to take that as a lesson learned. So taking a walk down to the garden now and we'll see what the damage is. So I'm down here in the garden and here is the plant that um, we took a look at yesterday. These leaves have just started um, to fall off on their own a little bit um, which is kind of what I was expecting based on what I read online. Um, the plant itself um, has quite a bit of damage. It isn't super close to these other plants and as I'm looking at the nearby plants I'm not super concerned. They look they look pretty good. Um, there are some spots here that look like maybe some insect damage. And I do see something that looks like maybe some fungus or some infection on some of these plants, but but not enough that I'm going to be really concerned about it. Um, it's nothing worse than maybe I've probably seen in the past. One thing I noticed right away when I came down here was that this cucumber um, is not climbing the trellis. It's, trellis. it's not behaving in the way that I um, was expecting it to and part of that is just that I've got this trellis overcrowded. It's just one of the um, consequences of overcrowding your garden, which I always do, um, which always turns out okay. It just uh, makes a little bit more work for me. So I've just started to um, take these growth points and poke them back through the trellis here and get them going in the direction that I want them to go. I want them, you know, up over these plants. They shouldn't be touching these plants. They shouldn't be shading them out um, and making it so that, you know, these pepper plants and whatever else is down here is not seeing the sun and getting some of the airflow that needs to get dried out so that it doesn't get these bacterial infections. Um, another concern is my contest tomatoes are right here next to the pepper plant um, and the um, black spot bacteria um, is um, it is possible to affect the tomato plants too so I'm concerned about that. So there's a pepper plant here that's getting a few spots. A pepper plant, this is the bad one that I spotted yesterday. And so uh, we'll take a close look um, and just decide, you know, do we want to sacrifice these plants to save the rest? Do we think that maybe if we treat it, um, they're going to be okay? Or, you know, how do we want to handle these? But again, the first thing, you know, I need to do is just really take a look at this cucumber plant and make sure that all of these branches are going in the right direction and not covering up the rest of what's down here. I could just take the rest of what's down here and get rid of it. That'd probably be um, or to never have planted it but would probably have been um, the best solution and not overcrowd my garden to begin with but but let's take a closer look down here and just um, kind of assess the situation and see if we can decide what we want to do next. You can see that a good you know, know two-thirds of the plant has some of this leaf spot. Um, here this leaf is pretty bad. This one will likely just Yep, it'll pop right off there if I bend it down. I'm just going to put this outside of the garden because it can spread. Um, over here on the other, yep, see this one just kind of popped off here too. I think that if this was my only pepper plant, I would um, take the time to treat it and try to save it. The new growth coming in is um, looking okay. Um, so then if I start looking at the plants around it, I see this one has a little bit of spot here. Um, a little bit of what looks more like insect damage, and so I'm not super worried about that. There's another plant, um, just to orientate us here, there's another plant here that still looks pretty good. I see some damage sort of 
at the bottom of this plant, but that's sort of what I would expect to see anyway, especially in a rainy season. So I think this plant is going to be just fine. I do see that this plant right next to my contest tomatoes here, this pepper plant, is really crowded in here and has some insect damage. Let's say hello to Molly. Hi Molly. What do you need? Just give me that to you. Oh, thank you. She's such a great gardener. So this um, pepper plant, although it looks pretty good, I would worry that it's harboring some of this infection. Well, it looks pretty good. I do see some little spots on this leaf. Um, and if it is harboring some infection, it is right here against my contest tomatoes. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sacrifice this plant. I'm going to leave the rest, but I am going to treat them pretty heavily. Well, not heavily, but per the directions of this copper fungicide. And so I can show you that too, um, how I manage that. So um, one thing I'll have to be careful of is just making sure that as I deal with this plant that I'm not, um, you know, getting my fingers and hands contaminated and spreading it to my other plants. Um, and then once that's pulled out, I'm going to just do a better inspection of some of these other plants too and remove any infected leaves um, and make sure that we nip this thing in the bud right now. So when you're pruning your plants, especially if you're dealing with some sort of infection, you want to make sure that your tools are clean. Um, these tools can spread disease from plant to plant, so um, having a clean a pruner tool is going to be important. And then just make sure to clean it up too afterwards. Um, some rubbing alcohol in here will make sure to get rid of any of those diseases. So this poor little pepper plant um, is coming out. I don't know if I need to, but I know that um, this bacterial infection is also soil-borne infection, and so I'm just going to take this clump of soil with, and this is going to go in the garbage, um, not in the compost. So I'm going to give that outside the garden for now. Um, looking at this pepper plant, I'm seeing a couple leaves that can come off. I'm just going to pinch these off, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven leaves off of this plant. pepper that's right next to my contest tomatoes um, I'll pay some special attention to. Again, I see some insect damage on here, but I don't see a lot of infection. There's a couple spots. I think in this case, um, my best bet is just to go ahead and treat this one. Um, and so with this, I mean, it comes with a hand pump sprayer, which um, I prefer not pump but it was it was easy and so I grabbed it at the store so I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, treat this one but I'll start with this one the directions are just you know spraying the entire plant this has a nice um, full spray so it's it's really hitting the whole plant here but I want to also make sure that I'm spraying the underside of these leaves it's probably not great <laughs> I'm getting this on my hands but um, I guess I with this type of sprayer I guess I don't really know how else to get the underside without touching in here. So down at the bottom of the plant here, I see a couple of leaves that are um, yellowing. I don't think this is disease. I think this is just their old leaves and they've been touching the ground and so um, they're not super healthy. Um, this one just fell right off. So I'll continue this process with the rest of these pepper plants. Um, I um, I'll also treat the tomatoes because this is a disease 
herbs that also infect tomatoes and I really don't want my contest tomatoes to um, be affected by this. So I'm going to treat all of these plants back here and in front and probably because um, prevention is really the only way to control this disease, um, I'll take the time and spray down all the peppers, all the tomatoes throughout my garden um, with this mix. Hopefully it'll last, um, hopefully it won't get all washed off in the rain, but it's worth it um, to save, to save these.